I thought I'd put a video out real quick. Uh, I know some people have had questions regarding the Nichrom wire. Um, to give you some options for guys who just you know don't want to order anything or just doing it as absolutely as cheap as they can. Um, to give you some options, here is Nichrome wire out of a hair dryer. And see if I can get a decent shot here. For example, you have this whole piece right here, which that's about uh, you know maybe two feet long. And then here's another piece that was uncoiled. All of this came out of, I think it was one or two hair dryers. Um, now, it's a different gauge. I haven't measured it to see what gauge it is. But I'm just going to kind of show you so that way if anybody has questions on how are you getting the actual ohm value as to how much wire you need. So here I am. I'm on ohms. And what you would do... Now this right here is 20 gauge, and it's what I use in the smokers. I'm trying to do this with both hands. So what you would do is you're just going to take one of your leads, and you're going to clip it on to the end of your wire. So right now, you know, I'm not, I'm not touching the table or anything, so I have one end there. And I'm going to take my other end, right here, and I'm going to go to the end of this wire. And, you know, making sure you're not touching anything. So right there is 1.7, dancing back and forth. Okay, there's 1.7, 1.8 ohms. That in itself right there uh, would be would be good. But the way the wire is, you can really stretch out. I could probably get a whole nother good foot and then only still be at, you know, 1.9. So that, believe it or not, a couple point tenths of an ohm, which is going to give you that much more wire and that much more contact area and then that much more smoke. So now, like I said, that's 20 gauge, what I'm using in like the, the paint can and things like that. Now, if you're going to use a hair dryer, a couple of things you're going to want to do is, A, make sure that the coils aren't touching. It's best to stretch this thing out because if you put your lead on this end, and let's say two of these coils, you want it stretched out. You don't want them shortened out against each other. You're not going to get a right value. So it's going to be too hard to do with one hand. So I'm not going to stretch that one out. But for example, this one here is stretched out a little bit. And clip it on that end. And then clip the other end on there. Alright, see now we're at 6 ohms. So right off the bat, you know, just using Ohm's law, which is volts over amps times ohms, six ohms, that's going to put you at uh, two amps. And, and I hope I'm right. I think I off the top of my head real quick. 12 divided by six. So, yeah, that's going to be two amps. Now, let's stretch this out a little bit. Okay. So yeah, we're about six ohms. Now, because this is a different gauge wire, the resistance is going to be different per per your length. So for example, I have almost the 20 gauge wire here at about 1.9 ohms is almost three feet long. So you know, you start wrap, wrapping the wicks up, it's a lot more contact area. Now, if I really stretch that wire out, it's going to give me another probably good foot. So, long story short, if you're just trying to do this as cheap as possible and you have a junk hair dryer or whatnot, now this wire, I'm not going to tell you a lie to you because I haven't used it. Um, I would think it would work, 
but obviously the thinner you go when you start pumping some amps through it it could just burn it burn it right up now a couple of things when you guys if you guys are making the paint can ones you got to make sure you're running an inline fuse I don't have one on the bench but for your power wires you're gonna want to have an inline fuse rated you know a couple amps over what your the amps as you're running so you know at two ohms that's gonna be six amps um, so I, I, I think I'm in the nicer ones here I think I have a 10 amp fuse but you gotta do that now I did read a couple other posts and other guys smokers and some of the questions I've seen those guys ask now listen when you don't have a switch for your power okay I've seen a lot of guys asking why is it sparking when I hook up my my leads okay for example right here well when you don't have a switch in line you're you're asking the circuit to be hot as soon as you make contact with the last connection you make so you're gonna get a little bit of a spark so don't let that scare you that's just because you don't have a switch in line making good contact circuit live as soon as you make contact so I don't know if that helps anybody but now I'm not talking a huge gigantic spark I'm just talking a little just a little tiny spark um, and then a couple of things I want to throw out there real quick these tips that you see on the real nice professional ones um, you know I haven't found anywhere we can buy just the tips they want you to buy the tip the hose and everything um, these here are made out of the same material Delron uh, the same taper same angle uh, same hole size anyway I'll sell these for 15 bucks a piece anybody's interested and let's see what else also yeah if you guys are making these paint cans you gotta make sure you're regulating that air down because you go putting this lid on super tight and you go putting you know I'm trying to remember what PSI the lid wanted to blow off before but I mean it'll happen quick if uh, you don't have a later now the best thing to do which now this is just a two stage right here but uh, anyway the best thing to do is get yourself a propane regulator whether it's an adjustable type like this right here or just you know I, I say don't even go with this just go to the store and buy a barbecue you know an LP gas regulator I've already measured that uh, inches of water output and it comes in right at or um, I shouldn't say that because depending on what BT rating you get but they're coming in like 13 inches of water dead on so and then also uh, the one video I put out with the paint can um, you go putting you know that 13 inches of water in there it's best if you can go ahead and put one of those cheap little Harbor Freight flow meters because uh, that one video I just put out you see all that smoke blasting out of there well if you have a flow control then you can drop that flow down and you know just dial it in how you want it if you don't want a whole bunch of smoke you can just turn the flow down and you're good to go so I hope this video wasn't a waste of time uh, I just know some people had some questions regarding the nichrome wire. I do think the hair dryer would work, but I just noticed it is a little thinner gauge. Um, so I think it would work. It just might not last a really long time. This little thicker 20 gauge wire, um, I think, is going to last you a really long time. I've seen this 20 gauge um, for melting plastic and industry and stuff like that lasts for years. So, um, I think that's about it. And if you, if anybody's interested, I thought about putting a video out of actually making this from scratch. I thought the one video explained it enough. And then I had some guys kind of ask, why can't you just show a video of you making it? So, I don't know. If anybody wants to see it actually, the whole thing made from scratch, there you go. Uh, I, I could do that, but I ain't going to do it just... 
for the hell of it. Nobody wants to see it, so. All right, there you go. Uh, I made these other ones.